Hi there. So today we're going to talk about how to create a profitable business plan. So yesterday we looked at um, the challenges of setting our personal goals and understanding what we personally wanted to get out of our business planning. And one of the first steps we need to go through in any kind of planning exercise is to understand what we as the business owner need to get out of this. And that helps us to find what our profit goals are going to be. So you have to excuse the dog, he's just having a wander around. Go lay down, honey. So, number challenge, uh, or one of our biggest challenges is going to be um, how to create a simple, succinct business plan. And business plans often don't get done because they're too complicated, because they're too time consuming. Um, they, they might be a little bit un unrealistic, they might be too difficult to generate. And the process becomes a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to talk you through the seven steps that we use to help define a simple business plan. So step number one is to know your why. And what does that mean? So why are you in business? Why do customers buy from you? Are you teaching them how to do something? Are you filling a gap somewhere? Are you solving a problem? Are you um, taking them through a, a transformation? So once you get clear on what it is that you have to offer and why people are buying from you, it helps the creation of your business plan um, become a reality because you, you know what you have to sell. Now, the, the more engaging your offer, your product, your service, your transformation is, the more likely you are to be able to make those sales. So it's really important that you understand, especially in times like these, what people are buying, why they're buying from you and why their need has changed. So it's it, again, it's a, a big exercise on trying to um, know your customer and understanding your customer avatar but it's really the fundamental and most important part of any process when you're building a business plan. So once you're really clear on what you're doing and why you're doing it, so why you are in business and why people are buying from you, we then need to look at what the successful outcome means to you. So, and what do we mean by that? So we're looking for, you, you need a business plan that is going to be productive. You need a business plan that's going to achieve a particular goal. So what does success in your business plan look for you? So quite often it's um, to grow, to um, you know, to, to get more breadth in a particular market. Um, quite often it's to launch a new product. But in times like these, what we're really looking for is the bottom line. So we want a business plan that's going to create profit and we need profit over those next um, 30, 60, 90 days. We need profit because we need to be able to generate enough money to take home the cash we need to support our families, to pay for our houses and our bills and all that kind of stuff. So we need to be really, really clear on the outcome. And at the moment, if you're producing a 90 day plan, it's quite likely to look very, very different to a 90 day plan that you might have produced before this crisis. So you need to know your why and you need to know what that successful outcome looks like. Step number three is to think about what success feels like. And what do we mean by that? So success needs to have, uh, you need to feel invested. You need to know what you want out of it at the end of the day. So if you've got a strong affiliation or a strong buy-in or a strong tie to something, you're more likely to make it a reality. So for example, um, if you are looking to, you know, achieve a life of success and, you know, life where you can buy fast cars or big houses or whatever, you're more than likely to feel a closer affinity to your goal if you go and test drive that car or if you take a tour around that new house or a bigger house or a better house than you're currently working in and it, it, living in. And if you can then feel what that success looks like, again, when it comes to writing and creating your plan, it's 
going to become um, more likely to be a reality. So it's a bit like creating um, a vision board or, you know, creating something that, um, you know, you can stick on your fridge. So quite often when people have a weight loss goal, for example, and I, I do the same, um, if I have a weight loss goal, I stick a picture of what I want to look like on the fridge so that it becomes more compelling when I go to the fridge. I'm not going to eat that chocolate or I'm not going to go and get that biscuit because I want to look like that. Um, your why and understanding what that success feels like is a really strong motivator into making sure that you build and create a 90 day plan that is achievable and workable for you. So um, a really good example at the moment, um, I I committed to my son to lose um, weight and to get down to a particular goal and get to a level of fitness, particularly while COVID is out there, um, because he's worried that because I'm, I'm sort of unfit, I'm asthmatic, um, I don't exercise an awful lot, um, you know, that I'm at greater risk. And he's probably right. So he made me pinky promise, now, as ridiculous as this sounds, he made me pinky promise that I wouldn't eat chocolate while he was here at home during the crisis. Now to me, because I pinky promised, I now feel compelled not to eat that chocolate because I pinky promised my son. And it, the, it's, it's changing your mindset to make sure that you want something and you want something badly enough or you can feel compelled badly enough. And with some people, um, like my pinky promise to Cameron, it's not so much the, um, I'm not driven in that case by the desire for success because I am motivated to lose weight but not enough to do anything about it. But I am more motivated by my fear of failure and not wanting to upset Cameron because I pinky promised that I wouldn't eat the chocolate. So... Whatever your motivator is, whatever your why is, whatever success feels like, whether it's one because you want money, because you don't want to rely on benefits during this COVID crisis, or you want to generate a business and grow your business during this crisis, you want to be able to run out of it and not crawl out of it, whatever success feels like to you, define it, write it down, draw it, make a picture of it, make a vision board of it. Um, it's difficult to get out and test drive cars and all that kind of stuff. But whatever it takes to get that commitment in yourself, you want a 90 day plan that you are actually going to work and you're actually going to do something with. So just reading some of the comments at the moment, um, somebody struggles with financial planning because they want to plan based on how much they get in your pocket, not how much profit. Yeah, and that that's exactly it. So when we're talking about profit, we need to be planning for outcome. And the outcome might be that you want to take £5,000 home from your business or £1,000 or £10,000, whatever you know your reality or your goal is. We want to take that money out of the business in order to live a life of you know whatever it is that we're trying to achieve. For, for some people, 10k a month would be normal. For some people, 10k a month would be... Um, you know, a, a luxury. So whatever your normal and your goal is for you, define it and want it. Now, you're quite right in terms of it's difficult to understand what to do and how much to put away because of the after tax effects. Um, so if you if you aim to draw, um, you know, say a thousand pounds or whatever, you might need to make 1300 1500 pound profit depending on what tax bracket you're in depending on whether you're a limited company or depending on whether you are um, a sole trader so what you need to do is get an idea of where you are now you can look at approximate percentages from the taxes that you're paying at the moment to work out how much you need to generate above your trading profits to have that kind of um, financial outcome you can look at historic accounts you can have a conversation with your accountant and build those percentages into your forecasts for the time being um, what's more important is just to have a clear idea of that goal for the next 30 60 and 90 days so my question for you at the moment let me try and play around with these so I'm just playing around with ecam at the moment and there we go I don't want that one I want that one and I want that one and I'm going to take away that one oh my goodness me 
So you can see that I am uh, still practicing with this. So do you know your why? Do you know what success looks like? Do you know what success feels like? So do you understand what you want out of your business? Just drop some comments, um, drop your, your thoughts in the comments below. Be really interested to see what you want out of your business over the next 90 days. So I was talking to a client yesterday who just wants to um, be able to survive. Um, so if you are selling, if you sell abroad on an online service, how does it affect your tax planning? Uh, it all depends. That depends on your um, uh, depends on your tax status, depends on your residency, depends on um, the profit levels you're making, depends on whether you're an incorporated or limited company. Um, super hard question to ask without any context of how your business is set up. That's probably a one to one conversation that you need to have with your accountant. So it is a fancy tool. So this is called um, Ecamm Live. And um, what it allows me to do is um, almost have like a, a mini film studio on your Mac at home. So it's uh, it's quite cool. So do you know your reason why? That's the first question you need to be asking while you are building a business plan. So and what this does allows me to switch stuff on and off. If you see like this. Let me switch my banner back on. So one of the things I didn't test before I came live is the layering of the um, add-ons and the um, these are called overlays so these overlays that I'm layering um, I moved them all around just before I came live so that it made more sense and more logic in my overlays box what I didn't think about when I did that is um, what that does to the banners because I want the banner to appear below in the layers below my questions so there we go. So my whys should now come up and I can move my banners around. So if you do any presenting or you want to do any presenting, um, it's a really, really good tool to help you get your message out there. Anyway, so I digress. So you know your why, you know what success looks like, you know what success feels like. So what's the next step on our um, journey to create a profitable business plan? So step number four is to have one overarching objective for your plan so it might be made up of lots of mini objectives and um, lots of actions to achieve that objective but one overarching goal and it's almost always especially in times like this going to be I want to be able to take X amount home in take home pay in after tax take home pay the thing that is on everybody's mind at the moment is to make sure that they as the business owners get paid and to make sure you have enough money to pay yourself, to pay your staff, to pay your team, to pay the people in your business. But primarily, at the moment, a lot of us are worried about being able to pay our own bills. So yesterday we looked at how much money we needed to generate in order to pay all of our um, must pay home expenses and what we needed to draw from our business. Today, we need to work out how we're gonna generate that business plan in order to make sure we can take home enough cash to pay our bills. So step five is to then start translating that goal into numbers. So, and what does that mean? Uh, I want to switch on that one, sorry. This is where uh, you need to have a smarter mouse and not move around too much. So the, the next challenge is to turn that goal into numbers. So let's have a think about um, what that means in terms of turnover. How much do our sales need to be? How much will our costs be? How much will our um, operating overheads be? So as a business, we'll have looked at how much, um, you know, how our costs are structured and how we need to move, um, you know, some of those expenses out of our business. Are they necessary expenses? Are they must have expenses? Or are they nice to have expenses that you can perhaps defer or postpone? Um, we need to think about how many customers that means and what the margin is on those customers, how many hours you want to work. So, you know, if you're working 40 hours a week at the moment, should have turned that off before I came in. So if you've got, um, if you're working 40 hours a week at the moment, is your goal to work 30? 
are you working 40 hours a week at the moment but you've got to produce a whole new product so you've got to start pivoting what you're doing and move online you've got to start rethinking about how you get to your customer so actually does that mean that instead of working 40 hours a week you're then going to be working 60 or 70 but you've got kids you've got a husband you've got a partner you've got people who are you know in your house demanding your time so you might not be going out to see clients but you've got more demands on your time to entertain the people that are in your house Perhaps you're not with anybody in your house and you've got to maintain all your lo- your social relationships on you know, Zoom or FaceTime or whatever. So how does that reflect and how does that impact the way you are planning your next 90 days and in terms of what you have to achieve? So once we've set a high level goal, so we're only doing high level goals at the moment. We want to know total um, amounts of income, total amounts of costs, total amounts of expenses, total amounts of cash that you need to bring home in 30, 60 and 90 days. So step number six, if I'm bringing that up the side there, step number six is a sales matrix. Um, We've got our high level number of how much turnover, how many sales we need to achieve in order to achieve our goal over the next 30, 60, 90 days. But what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of products or services or you know, is it 10 of these and five of these? Is it 100 of these and, you know, a million of these? In terms of what you have to sell, how many of those you need to sell in order to achieve those goals? And how feasible is that? You know, one, one of the, the challenges we have um, when we're doing business plans with clients is we see, um, you know, an, an escalating growth plan that goes over the next one, two, three, four, five years. And the the client is saying, well, I I want to achieve this level of sales. I want to be a million pound turnover business. I want to be a a this or that or the other. And you say, right, okay, that's fantastic. So what capacity do you have to do that? How many people do you need to help you do that? Do you need a premises? Do you need a, um, you know, a machinery? Do you need to engage a team of people to help you do that? And quite often those questions aren't answered. But the goal is to generate a million pounds worth of turnover. Now, the reality of when you start to achieve that is that business then becomes super complex and far more complicated than ever needs to be. Then all of a sudden you've got staff to manage. You've got systems, distribution channels, production, operations, and then your margins start to drop. So it's much better to be able to generate a hundred thousand pounds of profit out of a two hundred and fifty thousand pound turnover business than a fifty thousand pound profit out of a million pound turnover business. So it's really, really important to keep an eye on your product mix and the profitability of that product mix. So the size doesn't really matter. It's the quality of what you're delivering in terms of the profit margin. So in in this instance, I'm talking about quality in terms of profit margin and how much it delivers to your bottom line. And especially in times like we're in at the moment, if we are really, really clear on our income goal and what we're trying to draw out of the business and what we need personally to cover our, our bills and our dreams and our goals, then it helps us become more clear in our business goals and help understanding how we can drive those without sacrificing our own goals. Now number seven is always to review. So have a think about what that means to you. Um, Have you got any rental costs or you know new commitments that are coming up in three months time that you haven't thought about? Um, Does your charge out rate reflect the sales matrix that you've decided on? Um, Could it be that you've decided that you're going to deliver, you know, X many hours of consultancy, but actually you haven't got enough hours in your working week because maybe 50 percent of those is doing admin or sales or marketing or, you know, all the other stuff. So there's a big review exercise to be had. It's always the last stage of your business plan. Now, when we're producing um, a business plan like this, this is all very, very high level. So it's something that can be done within a couple of hours and it sets an overriding um, focus for your business. Now, this isn't the end of it. Tomorrow, we're going to have a look at the actions that you need to take in order to make that profit plan a reality. 
But today, all we're focused on is building a high level plan with a clear goal in mind. So we will have understood our why, we'll have understood our successful outcome. We know what it feels like, we know what it's measured in in financial terms. We've got one overarching, overarching objective, and that might be to achieve X amount of take home pay over the next 90 days. We know what our goal is in numbers. We know what that sales matrix is. So we know what products and services that we've got in order to um, create that goal and generate that money. And then we've reviewed it to make sure we haven't missed anything. So let me have a look. So please pay, uh, make some notes in the comments. Let me know whether this video has helped you at all. Um, please click on the like button. Um, please, if you're in one of our Facebook groups, and you think this content could help other people that you know make more profit in their business, please share it with them and invite them into the groups. That's really, really important to us to, especially in the free groups that we have, is trying to generate more um, engagement, how to you know bring more people in, help more people. So we're trying to um, go live and do something really useful at least um, you know three or four times a week, maybe every day, maybe that's a bit too much, haven't decided yet. But really want to try and create some traction and help more people make more profit. So don't forget to um, press the like on the button, invite people into the group. And if you want to work more closely with us, then and you're not in Profit Hackers already, then do join Profit Hackers. So this coming Friday, we're going to be doing a deep dive into this seven step business plan and actually doing a live workshop where we'd be working through this with you. So hopefully we join you there. So I'm just looking at one of the comments. My reason to, to spread the ethos of my company if I license up my dance studio to other clients. Ah, yes. But it's bricks and mortars business. So now is a great time for dance, studio, uh, dance teachers to learn how to set themselves as a dance studio business once the virus is over. The scary part when we go back to normal will be dance studios to their full capacity. Yeah, and that that's a real challenge because... Um, the, the virus isn't going anywhere at the moment. Um, so is there going to be a normal? When are we going to get back to normal? Um, you know, they're, they're only just starting to work on the on the vaccine, aren't they? So there's still going to be a level of um, people in the community who don't want to go back into crowded spaces because they don't know if they're immune and they don't want to put themselves at risk. So I do still think that, the, that there isn't going to be a normal like there was before for a long long time so it's going to be the people that are going to survive are going to be those that can adapt to a bricks and mortar business that potentially has enough room to do sensible um, social distancing but can also offer their product and support online for those people that really don't want to go into that public environment and don't want to potentially be that close to other people you just don't know how long this is going to last so if you're thinking about licensing um, dance studios and programs, I think you need to think about what you can do both online and offline so that you've got, um, you know, if this is diff two different distributions channel, two, two different distribution channels for you, two different methods of delivery. So how can you have people coming into your world, both the online and the sort of in-person world? So I think you need to think about that. So um, that was really great talking to you today and thank you so much for your comments and your feedback and um, we'll be back tomorrow to talk about putting this business plan into action and creating an action plan. So speak to you soon. Bye for now.